Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to today's session on resources. Uh, this is uh, Nelly Deutsch. Yes, I'm back home, and uh, it's really nice to be back. And today we're going to be discussing resources. So if you could just add in the chat box where you're from and keep the chat box going with questions, comments, and everything else. People are going to be coming in as we go, so um, feel free to welcome them and ask them where they're from. All right, so we've got Yemen. Hello, Agdi. Good to see you here. We've got Sarah from Thunder Bay. I hope the weather is nice there. Uh, sunny Venezuela. And let's see who else is here this uh, morning. Uh, all right, so we've got Italy. Hello, Nevis. Elaine from the United States, New Jersey. Good to see you. And have I missed anybody? Well, if you could just add where you're from or anything else. Um, South Africa. Where in South Africa exactly? South Africa is huge, isn't it? All right, so it's not snowing yet. That's good. It's only October. All right, so uh, Thanksgiving is behind us. If you're a Canadian, if you're not a Canadian, and you're an American, then you've got Thanksgiving coming. Any other holidays that are coming up in your area as uh, we wait for people to come in? Halloween, yes, the end of the month. That's a pretty North American holiday. And we've got Atlanta. Wonderful. Oh my God, Elaine. Day of the Dead. Is that what they call Halloween in Mexico? Yes, I saw Wadi. I saw your link to uh, slide speech and I responded. You need to do your own and not add my name as if I'm doing it. Uh, and add the notes. I'll be talking about that today, how you can add notes and not have to use your microphone. Duck Apple. What is that? All right. So my opinion is that it's a starting point, but it's not complete. All right. Feel free to um, ask questions as we go. Resources. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to uh, go into a definition. So start thinking. What are resources in general? And we'll be talking about the purpose of uh, resources on Moodle 2.7. We'll be talking about purpose in general of uh, this Moodle MOOC and learning online, specifically for teachers, but for others as well. We'll talk about certificates, badges, and sample of resources. So hello, Brian, and welcome. All right, so definition. Well, before you take a look at this, because I only added it, when you think of a resource, what do you think of? And you can go back to uh, when you were in school and what was meant by resources. Hello, Margaret. Again, you're looking forward to earning your badges. That's great. And learning about them as well. Badges are really wonderful as well as certificates. And they are activities. We'll be talking about activities later on today. And a certificate is actually an activity on Moodle and very easy to generate. So uh, Brian says Blackboard and Chalk <laughs> are uh, resources. That's wonderful. Thank you for adding that. So a resource could be a chalk. It could be a blackboard, a library. Very good, uh, Nevis. Yes. Uh, sand. Well, if you're going to play in the sand, that might be a resource too. Uh, I don't know, Margaret. Sand pits for weighing. <laughs> okay. 
maths. Okay, whatever comes to mind when you think of a resource, and I'm sure that you're all very creative and you can think of a lot of different things when you think of a resource. And by the way, the definition of creativity is thinking about different things at the same time. So if we want our students to be creative, we might want to practice and not and see what happens to us. What happens when we are given a chance to be creative and come up with different things and we find ourselves stuck? Okay, what causes us to be stuck is probably the same thing that's going to cause our students to be stuck. Okay, so think about it. So some of the things that uh, came to mind uh, for me was a reference, including a reference library. I'm glad you mentioned that, Nevis. So a library has lots of reference books, but references. And when you think of reference, in reference to what? And I think, Brian, that's a good example, a measuring tool or some kind of measurements when we think of a reference point. Okay, so we have a reference point and then we kind of um, ripple around it. So I'm stuck on making video on resources. Very good, Elaine, we'll be talking about that. I'm glad you're stuck because being stuck is really important to learning. So remember that being stuck is important. Being stuck is super important to learning because if you don't get stuck, you can't get very far, right? You need that friction to be able to move. So being stuck is important because it causes us to reflect and think and then ask questions to get unstuck. And that's where learning comes in. If everything is perfectly normal and there are no ripples and nothing is going on, you're not going to learn very much. So you need to have the challenges and the questions and the problems and whatever you want to call them to be able to learn. That's where curiosity comes. So reference, content is another way of saying resources, text. A resource could be a text. Uh, where we use words, or it could be multimedia. And when you think of multimedia, what comes to masking? That's right. That's exactly what I was thinking of, Tom. Stuck in the mud. Either you drown in that quicksand, or you find a way to get out, or you ask someone to help you, which is one way. So um, multimedia, you think of movies. Okay, anybody else? Multimedia. When we think of multimedia in uh, our online world and the internet, and especially uh, think of all the social networks like Facebook and Google Plus uh, and LinkedIn, scoop it, everything. And that's right, video clips. So when you think of multimedia, you've got actually images audio and a video and that's what it's all about and we're going to get to that very soon margaret on and who else uh, was asking for help on documenting that's right margaret flickr pictures wikimedia comment that's right so we think of text as being very flat and uh, multimedia as being richer with videos and uh, audio and images. All right. Now, resources uh, are also ways that we can facilitate learning. Can you imagine learning without resources? You know, think for a moment. No resources. Is that possible for learning to take place? There's one for you. Can we learn without resources? Okay, we need something external, something out there uh, to be able to connect with. If there's nothing out there to connect with, where are we going to go? Okay, it could be anything. It could be the food. Uh, it could be the screen. It could anything, anything that's outside of our beings, okay, is actually a resource. So it could be your hand. It could be my cup of coffee. It could be a book, just the outside image of the book. It could be the content, the words in the book, anything.
anything that drives us to learn. So facilitates learning, all right? The word of mouth. And it engages learners. Now, when I think of learners, I think of different things. But what do you think of when you think of learners? Okay, let's see how many things you get out there. Try to be creative. Don't worry about what comes out. Whatever it is, it's you which makes it perfect. Because you're the learn. Well, sorry, oops. I said that, didn't I? Thank you, Tom. Okay, so um, when you think of learning, you think of dreaming, all right? The brain actually learns better from stories. Nice. Okay, whatever. Pen, paper. All right. When you think of learning, practicing, students, children. Okay, everybody, look at different things. Enhancing behavior. Nice. See, everybody's got different ideas. That's why it's so wonderful that there are so many people out there that we can have a learning bounced off. So resources are also people, right? They're people. You, I, everyone. That's right. Everyone is actually a learner. So we're engaging one another. We're bouncing off each other. And that's a resource. Okay, so we are resources. People are resources. And everyone's a learner. And hello to Priscilla and welcome. People are going to be coming in. So uh, welcome them. Ask them where they're from. That's right. That discussion forum is also a resource. Questions that we write in the discussion forums are resources because we're going to learn from all of this, whether it's textual or multimedia. Okay, it's something to learn. So what is the purpose of a resource? Old people, young people, everybody. I mean, you can learn from babies <laughs> and we do learn from babies. If we're mothers or if we're care caring for the babies, doesn't matter what age. A resource not only passes on, inf well, it does. It does. It passes on information without really wanting to. It may be hidden information. It doesn't have to be obvious. And what we get in our brain is the information, right? So the purpose of a resource is learning. Okay, we got that. So we need the resource to learn. And we all know this. I'm not giving you new information, am I, right? This is not new. You know this. I'm just pointing it out. Actually, you know everything. <laughs> you know more than you realize, okay? But you, but you need to hear it to realize that you know, oh, I know this. And that's a good feeling. So keep that in mind, that you know a lot more than you realize. All right, so let's take a look at this. Learning. Now, the purpose is learning, but how do I know that I'm learning? Or, well, how do I know? Or how does somebody else know that I've learned it? That's right, Margaret. It's called hidden or null, exactly. Because you're not only learning from a curriculum. You're learning everything around it. And sometimes we learn more from the hidden curriculum, as it's also called, than we do from the written. And that's wonderful. There's nothing wrong with it. All right. So we want to demonstrate in some way what we learn. And that's why I showed this book, which I'm really happy about, because it actually writes about everything that I've been advocating for the past 30 plus years. Okay, and that's a student engaged assessment where the student, and that could be the teacher uh, who's learning, uh, demonstrates what they learn and they assess, they're assessed through the presentations. And that's what's happening in this MOOC. You will be assessed from your presentation. That's right. Okay, so that's, you have to demonstrate to yourself. First of all, what am I learning? And this is where the PowerPoint presentation comes in. And it's also a way to sustain learning. So actually, when you're demonstrating, you're teaching. 
And that's how we learn. We learn by teaching others. If we keep it to ourselves, we're not going to get very much. So actually, in this MOOC, you are forced to demonstrate. And not everybody likes it. Okay, so let me put a question mark there. How many of you are not too happy about having to demonstrate your learning? I mean, be honest. I'm sure many of you are not too happy about it. Okay, right? Beca why? Why are we not happy about demonstrating what we learn? It's time consuming, and yet we expect it of our students, right? Uh, it's time consuming. It's fearful. Thank you, Sarah, for saying that. That's right. We have to be open, and it's not always pleasant to show our vulnerability. We become vulnerable when we show what we learn. But that's the best way to sustain learning once we get over it. So we have to get over a lot of things. But that's the price we pay for learning. Okay, so um, there's a price. And the purpose is, and the resources, is to engage students. We want students to be involved with the content, with the resources, with the people who are also resources. And we want them to use technology. And Brian mentioned sand, he mentioned a pen, someone mentioned paper, pen, uh, somebody else mentioned. So we want them to use technology. Technology is a resource. It's a means. That's right. It can be very frustrating. But learning, and you know, the more we realize as teachers that learning is frustrating. And that demonstrating what you learn and not taking a test. You know, my students prefer taking a test. It's so easy. You know, yes, no, uh, copy, paste. It's so easy to demonstrate, but does it really demonstrate what you learn if you take a test? Are you going to go through life taking tests to show people what you know? Are you going to remember what you learn by taking tests? How long will you remember? What will you be able to do with what you were tested on. And did the teacher include everything? Does that include all the learning that took place? Will the test include all that? Probably not. Okay, and we all realize that. That's why this is how we're doing it. Through student-engaged assessments, through certificates. This is the carrot. Okay, if it's really hard, then you get the carrot. And the carrot is your certificate. You're going to demonstrate what you learn by getting a certificate. Okay, and to qualify for a certificate, you need to do a few things. Okay, so let's go over them a little bit. Yes, Tom, <laughs> guilty. We are all guilty uh, of miss. It's called, well, Nevis will probably be able to write. It's called blinking, blind. We're all blind, okay? And we have blinks. Blinks are spots where we miss information. We all have this. Unless we know attention blinks, thank you. Unless we know what's there, we're going to miss it, most likely. You can't see everything all the time. Tom, have you come to that conclusion? Would you like to do a research study on it? I wonder why. Yeah, we have to admit, and that's how we learn. We learn about ourselves, and I'll get to that in a minute, okay, about metacognition. So you're going to reflect on five webinars, like this one. Okay, so I hope you've got the tools ready and that you are getting screenshots of this as we go. 
<laughs> know it all, Mr. Know all. Um, and you're going to do this on a blog, five blog posts. And you're going to share the link of each. So let me ask you this. When you go to um, reflect, what are you going to share in your reflection? Now, that's a very, very general question. What are you going to share? There's a list, okay? You have a list. Any presentation of things to include is just follow the list, the browser. Like, yes, go ahead. All right, you're going to share a link. That's what you're going to share. A link of what? Okay, just follow me. A link of what are you going to share? Of your blog? Specifically, Elaine, of what? Blogs? No. Can someone be specific? You're going to share a link of... Look at the... Uh, very good. That's right. Mokegala. That's right. You're going to share a link of the blog post. Link of blog post. That's what you're going to share. So how many blog links are you going to share? That's right, Elaine. You got it. Okay. All right. You're going to share five links. That's right. So you're going to have five blog. Well, you can have more. You know, don't let me stop you. Okay. Now, the certificates have a purpose, and I mentioned one. That's right. Thank you, Tom. 30. Wow, Elaine. Okay. There are 33 now. Uh, we've added one more presenter, or maybe two. All right. So um, the purpose is to use Moodle. Now you're going to ask me, what, Nelly? How does the certificate force me to use Moodle. Moodle, not model, Moodle. How does it force me to use Moodle? I would have started it, but recording voice over the present day. You don't have to OB2000. You can use slide speech without your voice, some other voice, and I'll explain even though I've explained it before, but I can explain as many times. I'm sure. Um, well, the certificates is an activity on Moodle, and this is how you're going to use it. You're going to be using Moodle for the certificates. You're going to be reflecting, and you're going to be using technology. Three things at the same time. Okay, now the Moodle. The certificate is actually a course. Yes, it's a course with a number. Anybody have the course number ready so that you can add it in the chat box? Any, anyone? A course link to the certificate area. It's a course. Yep. Well, I'll let you do that as we go. Let's see if someone can find the course. So a certificate is actually a course. The course has assignments and the assignments are part of the activity and a certificate. A certificate is an activity on Moodle. Okay. And you get a chance to practice the editor on the Moodle. And the editor is very different from other editors because it's a Moodle editor. Okay, so we're going to look at all of these. We're going to look at the editor and the certificate. Are you ready? So let's start with reflecting. The point of reflecting, as we've said so far, is to get you thinking. Thinking. Not only thinking about the resource, but thinking about yourself as a learner and how you feel about the resource. 
Now, thank you, Nevis. It's hot. It's higher order thinking skills. Now, you may have feelings. You're supposed to feel. The whole idea of learning is to feel. Learning and feeling go together. Uh, a long time ago, they thought that they were separate parts of the brain, but actually they are in the same part of the brain. You cannot learn unless you feel. You have to feel. Now, you can feel anything. You can feel sad. You can feel happy. You can feel negative and you can feel positive. But these feelings are very, very important to sustaining learning. All right. So reflecting is a way. So if you don't like the resource, that's good. You're, you're connecting. So reflecting forces you to sustain learning. It forces you to think. And this is TOPS. And I want you to think about it. It's self-directed. The learning is directed internally. It's not about the teacher. It's not about passing an exam. It's not about getting a degree. It's not something artificial. It's about you. It's about you and your learning, about learning and about yourself. Excellent. The more questions, the better. Ask lots of questions. And of course, it's about metacognition. Anybody uh, have another word for metacognition? Meta. Anyone? Those of you who know Latin and Greek should have thinking about thinking. That's right. It's about thinking. I mean, what's the point of learning if it's not about ourselves? It's a skill that we develop. But we were born with it, Waji. Where did we lose it? We were born with uh, self-directed learning. That's how we started. And that's how we should continue, if at all possible. Okay, that's what it's all about. That's right. It's very holistic. It involves everything. All right. And you'll be using technology. Now, PowerPoint. How many of you, give me a thumbs up if you know how to create a PowerPoint. You don't have to be good at it. You can just do it. Okay, let's say any thumbs down, not able to create a PowerPoint. Now, you don't have to buy MS uh, PowerPoint. You can get OpenOffice for free. You don't have to pay anything. And they're beautiful. You can get a PowerPoint for free through open office okay so you don't have to buy microsoft anything because office is pretty expensive yes margaret that's right open office is free and you can use google drive to work on and then go through open office all right if you're using a mac you can also buy but you don't have to why buy you can also have free uh, macs also have their own office now for free. All right, you'll also be using blogs, and that's also technology. It's internet. Okay, the difference between the PowerPoint and blogging is that one is on the cloud and the other one isn't necessarily on the cloud. Okay, so blogging is on the cloud or on the internet, but PowerPoint is not. But you're going to put it there. You're going to put the PowerPoint presentation on the cloud and you're going to use text, audio, video, and images in your blog post. Why buy? That's right. That's what I always say. Why buy when it's free? And then, of course, the multimedia, which is so important. And here's the multimedia that you'll be using. Audio, video, images, and text. And we mentioned this at the beginning. Now, if you don't have a microphone or voice, well, you have to have it, otherwise you wouldn't hear me, right? You need a voice card of some kind. You can use slide speech, and I'll be talking about slide speech. Okay, now these are the multimedia technology that you'll be using. You'll be using MoveNote, Screencast-O-Matic, 
slide speech. Okay, these one of these or all three. Jing, if you like it, or I'll be discussing other capturing images, and the editor. These are the technologies that you need to know in order to use them in your classes, because the point is to teach using these tools and get your students to use them too. So you need to become an expert in order to pass it on. And why are these important? Because they force you to get your students engaged in assessment and everything else that I mentioned up to now. All right, move note. Has anyone used move note before? Uh, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you've used move note. It's completely free. Okay, Elaine, move note. Okay, I see some have and some haven't. Okay, so get a check, use it. It's wonderful. What it does is it works with a PowerPoint presentation or a PDF file. Okay, and this is what it looks like. It's completely free. You can get for education. You can sign in with your Google, your Gmail account in number three. Okay, so you can get it for free. And it's getting better and better. So it's called MoveNote. You can use it directly from your Gmail, your Google Drive. Okay, completely free. All you need to do is upload your PowerPoint presentation, speak, and share the link. You can also embed the link on your blog. And that's the point. The point is to embed the link on your blog. Okay, for those of you that want to use your microphone, where's my mic? That want to use their microphone, they have a microphone, this is how it's done. It's amazing. You're going to love it. Okay, absolutely love it. The question is, what are you going to put on your slides? I hope not too many words. Okay, use that for the blog post. Another tool that you can use that is completely free, unless you want to pay a little bit, and I'll talk about that, is Screencast-O-Matic. This is where you record your voice and go through screens. You do not need to create a PowerPoint presentation, or you could if you want to. And you get an account for free. You start the recording even without an account. You can get help, and they respond very quickly. So send feedback if you need help. And number four, you can watch the demo on how to do it. A little bit about Screencast-O-Matic. I use it all the time. The free, you can get 15 minutes, up to 15 minutes. You don't need to make it longer. You get to publish it on YouTube using higher definition, which means really, really good quality. You can also publish your as MP4s and get the embed code for your blog post. All right, these are great resources. You can also embed this in your Moodle course. Okay, or if you're using YouTube, you don't need to embed anything. You just type a link, the link. If you want to pay $15 a year, you get the following. Okay, a little bit more there because you get drawings. You can draw as you speak, and that's really amazing on the screen. Okay, so this is something to look for. Next is slide speech. How many of you have tried slide speech? Yes, that's right, Tom. No, some of you have. Okay, Priscilla. Slide speech, you don't need a microphone. You don't need your voice. You can have a machine instead but you need to create a PowerPoint presentation and you need, and you can do it from your cell phone. This is great for students. They love this. Okay. You can sign up for free. Everything is completely free. You create a PowerPoint presentation, but notice you must create, and this is super important. You need to create 
the notes. If you don't have notes, you can't do this. Okay, so uh, you need to create notes for each slide. Okay, so you need to create the notes. Okay, the notes is actually the speech. Exactly, Elaine. So for those students who don't, or for you, or if you'd like to try all of these, you're welcome to try them. You've got five blog posts. You can try one in each. That's right. So they don't, but they need to write notes for each slide. Notes for each slide. Okay, of the PowerPoint presentation. How come? How come what? Yeah, try it because it's it's you're trying this so that you can actually get your students to do the same. You want your students to sustain learning and of course uh, get the benefit of thinking, reflecting, using technology and having fun because it's going to be fun. They're going to be able to use everything through their cell phones, and they love that. Okay, so let's continue on here uh, with capturing images. Now, I don't know how you guys capture image, but I love Jink. I just love Jink. It's, it's a sun. <laughs> it's a round sun. It sits on your desktop or somewhere in front of you. And all you need to do is open up the sun, the little yellow sun, and just capture images. And of course, Macs have it, and Windows also have their capturing, their image capturing tool, Snagit. But Snagit costs money. I also have Snagit. I paid for it, but I never use it. I prefer Jing. Isn't that funny? Uh, pick pick excellent that's great so everybody has their own here are some that you might not know and what's nice about Jing is you copy it you cut copy and you paste it on your slide and I love that option okay but many others have it too green shot okay so this is Jing this is the Sun that sits on your computer you go to this here you open it up you get the image and you slice it up and Paste, copy, and paste it. You can also use uh, things like I use all the time. I'll show you in a minute. You can also use drawings to draw on it, which is what I've been doing. Let me go to one drawing here to show you uh, where you can draw using Jing. Okay, here it is in slide 13. You see all these, number one, two, and three, the boxes and everything, I did using Jink. Because what you have in front of you here on the whiteboard is actually a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Who doesn't love the sun? That's, that's, that's a good point there, isn't it? Um, so that's Jink. In addition, you can use Awesome Screenshot, especially if you're using Chrome. How many um, have used Awesome? I don't use it because I don't use Chrome on my Mac. I use uh, Safari. Oh, you haven't, eh? I know people who use Chrome love it. It just sits there in their browser and they just capture whatever they need. What's nice about it is you get a link right away and you can share that. With Jink, you don't. And you may have to pay for extra uh, memory and things. You have Snagit and you don't pay for it? I pay. I paid for my Snagit. Um, so it's called Awesome Screenshot. Now, if you click on the image in the PowerPoint presentation, you'll be able to get the links. Uh, so let me get that uh, for you. Okay, I'm going to get um, the image for you. I mean, the PowerPoint presentation for you. Let me do that now. You can also get it. If you go into the WizIQ course, uh, you'll be able to get the link to today's PowerPoint presentation because WizIQ also changes the PowerPoint presentation and puts it on the cloud with a link. So you can share the link. Here's the link. So if you go into uh, 
each of the images are clickable. Okay, so I just shared the link with you. Ah, that's a good question, Priscilla. No, I'm glad you're asking. It's really important to ask and not feel uncomfortable because that's what learning is about. It's really about asking questions. And even if we feel uncomfortable because we think, I mean, everybody has gone through this, Priscilla. Um, sometimes we forget, sometimes we don't know, and we're too embarrassed to ask. Okay, to annotate means to write, yes, to additional information. To explain things. All right, now notice this. This is called bounce. And if you go to the PowerPoint presentation to slide number 22 and click on the image, the whole image, you'll be able to get the link to Bounce. Has anybody heard of Bounce? Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you've heard of Bounce. It's also completely free. And it's a fun, they call it fun and easy way to share ideas on a website. You grab a screenshot. It's really a lot of, it is fun. It really is fun. Uh, the image capturing tools are a lot of fun because we're doing something. We're using um, our fingers if we're on an iPad or an, a smartphone or we're using the mouse or something else. Um, to to do this so we're doing something and you can it shows you how you can drag and you can share the image with your friends you can also upload it and of course it's completely free so there's bounce next is the rich editor now rich editor is a really important uh, tool to learn about it's technology and you really need to learn to be able to make the most of it now, this is a Moodle 2.7 editor. The editors change. Uh, Moodle 2.6 was a bit different. All right, this is Moodle, exactly. Number one, uh, you've seen this, but make the most of it. Number one, you need to open it up. This is only one level. You need to open it up so that you have three levels. Notice number two is link, and we have to know how to hyperlink words or images. You can also hyperlink an image, which is what I did here. Okay, I hyperlinked this whole image that I cut up with Jing and not with Bounds. And then number three, this I cut up with Jing. Okay, this is Jing. Number three, we can add an image, and again, hyperlink it to and number four, you tell me, what's number four? This is on the editor before I open it up. That's right. Okay, you can add multimedia here, video and audio. That's right, bassoon. This is the rich editor when we open it up. Notice there are now three rows. <laughs> or three levels as I call them. Okay, we saw the top one. Now we have two additional ones. So now it's even richer. Okay, now notice all these options. Learn about them. Number one, since we're talking about multimedia, number one, you've got the image and multimedia or the video and audio. Number two is Poodle. How many of you have used Poodle? in your editor on Moodle. You've introduced yourself and you've used, um, you've been using the editor, but have you really paid attention? You see you haven't. Try the tools, you cannot break anything. Try everything, you really can't. It's not like this cup of coffee that can break or this book, nothing can happen. I mean, not break, but the book can, you know, get damaged in some way. Um, you can't damage anything in the editor. Nothing at all. So why not use it? All right, so try everything. Yes, try, try this. Okay, notice on the left, you will see a microphone. Pick it up. See what happens. You can always delete if you don't like what you hear. 
before you publish, before you save it. Number, the next one is a video. Yes, try it. If you don't like it, delete. And then try the one next to that. Find out what that is. And look at the camera. Any ideas what the camera stands for? It's just an icon. But what can you do with a camera? Any ideas? That's right. You can get a snapshot of yourself. Imagine, straight in the editor. This is a Moodle 2.7 editor. And look at all the wonderful things that you can do there. And not only you, but your students will be able to do the same. All right, not screenshot, selfies. Yes, get some selfies in there for your introductions or for anything else that you'd like. Try these out in the TPA and we'll be talking about where you will try these out. Okay, so get your certificate and you'll be learning as you do. You'll be learning about self-reflecting, you'll be learning about technologies, and you'll be learning about Moodle as you do it. And that's the point of the course. This course is about Moodle, learning to Moodle. So you need to do Moodling things. And the certificate is one. And learning about the editor is really, really important. Okay, there's the link. Now, what information can you get from this link? Okay, take a look at it. And everything that you see is correct because it's what you see. So feel free to add in the chat box. What information do you get? One piece of information, two pieces of information, or more. But you can start with one. Link to Moodle for Teachers. Excellent. Everybody should try Moodle. <laughs> That's right. Everybody should try Moodle. What else do you get there? Any other information? Brian was brave. Don't be afraid. Be vulnerable. Learning takes an effort. Okay? You need to get messy and you need to put yourself up there for learning. It's a web page. Thank you, Margaret. That's right. It's a link. And this link came from Moodle for Teachers. And it came from a course. It's a course. Remember I told you that it's a course? And the name of the course is Moodle MOOC 5, Reflecting on Webinars. This is where you'll get your certificate. This is the link. And the number of the link, the ID is 51. Okay, that's the ID. All this information. Okay, so and you get it from your browser window. So remember, the browser window has a lot of information. I mentioned this in the opening that every blue part in Moodle, wherever you are, has a link in the browser window that you can share with other people. So keep that in mind when you ask for support. Give us the link and a screenshot. Whenever you have a question, get a screenshot. Okay, now you know how. What happened to Brian? Switching from PowerPoint to chat as my screen is blank due to poor internet. Oh, I'm so sorry. But I hope you can hear me. Sorry about that. And this is what you'll get. I, I just took a... You, you can't get it today. You need to uh, reflect on five. And then Moodle will award you. It's automatic. I don't do anything. Moodle will do it. Okay, so Moodle will award you. Uh, with a certificate and this is what it'll look like it'll have your name whatever name you put there in your profile so make sure you have the name a full name that you want for your certificate and this is what it'll look like reflecting on the webinars okay so that's what you'll get you'll also get badges and i believe someone has asked about badges okay there are the badges Yes, at least five. Five is enough. You don't need, I mean, for the certificate. Uh, thank you, Brian. 
for adding that. Do I see? I oh, don't know. Okay, there it is. That's the tutorial for today's session. Thank you. That's the PowerPoint. Notice week one. How many people have um, a badge already for week one? Notice it's going uh, top down, number one. Week one, you got, oh, good for you, training goddess. Oh, and OB2000 has one too. Great. All right. And Margaret and Neva is nice. All right. So whether you're in the uh, Moodle for beginners or Moodle for non-beginners, you qualify for a badge. Okay. And these, the criteria, notice what you need to do to get the badge. It's automatic. I think someone asked, uh, is it automatic? Yes, it is. It's pretty much automatic. Don't worry about the boxes. There are two courses. One is for beginners and one is for non-beginners, by the way. In the chat box, if you are NB, non-beginner, or B, are you an NB or B? Priscilla's a B. NB. Okay, I hope you only stay in one. If you're in both, leave one because it confuses us. NB for 27. <laughs> All right. That's right. It's NB for 27. I always have the problem of access to Moodle. Shall I open a new email? No, 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 Bassoon, email me and I will help. Okay, so email me, uh, Bassoon, please, at nellydeutsch at gmail.com and I will help. Okay, I was on vacation for about two weeks. I missed my flight, very bad. Had to pay another ticket. <laughs> my husband and I had to pay, so... Uh, that's why I'm late. I'm a day late. All right. So um, are you? Yes, flights. No, it wasn't their fault. It was my, um, well, my husband takes the blame. But yeah, we just uh, missed it by one day. We forgot to go to the airport. <laughs> we thought it was another. I guess we just wanted to stay. Deadline. Deadline for sharing the links to the blogs, to the blog post, not blog, blog post, is I believe the end of November. Tom, am I right? The end of November? Am I right? Yes. Okay, the end of November. That's right. But unofficially to the next MOOC, but let's not. Uh, don't uh, procrastinate too long. It's not a good idea. All right, so there are two courses. You can belong for now. <laughs> yes. um, okay, now, where are you going to practice everything? And then delete if you don't like it, but delete. Where are you going to practice? Well, uh, for the uh, resources, you can practice on the teacher practice area. You're all automatically enrolled. You don't have to enroll yourself. And on Moodle for Managers, M for M. Okay, and if you click on these, don't forget, this is an image. It's, whoops, it's clickable. I just took myself out. Why not do that? Sorry about that. I just kicked myself out. Sorry, uh, my mistake. Uh, so let's take a look. Let me just uh, get a few minutes here so we don't get timed out. All right. So um, what you do is you go in there, number one, you go into the resource and you can practice there, but don't forget to turn on the light. If you don't turn on the light, it's going to be too dark. Uh, this is not really a light, but uh, it's green. It should be red. If it's red, it means that you have the editor on. You see that little pencil? That's an editor. So make sure that it's on so that you can practice all the resources. Now, how many resources are there? Take a look at how many there are. Can someone count? How many are there?
Okay, I'm sure many of you have already done this. So this is actually a review for you, which is wonderful. Seven. Exactly. And these are the same for each uh, Moodle. All right. So we've got book, file, folder, IMS, content package, label, page. The problem is generally with, well, you tell me, what have you had problems with? And I'll, okay, how many, what have you, ah, uh, that's right. Okay. So many of you may have had problems with the IMS. And I want to share a link, if I can find it here to the IMS um, so that you can get lots of um, information there. Here it is. Let me get the link for you. Um, okay, just a second. Get the link for you. Here we are. There's the link. This is really useful and you might wanna just try it out. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to help. Okay, so there are a lot of IMS there. They're all, of course, free. So try them out. Okay, just try them out. You don't have to do anything. Just uh, go in there and try them out. If you uh, go into any of these resources on Moodle, they'll uh, prompt you with an explanation. And the explanation is on the top right. Okay, it may be a full page, so be ready for a lot of reading. Don't go into more help. I don't recommend it because that's going into uh, difficult things. So unless you have the time, I would just go into the explanation on the Moodle and not go into more help. Yeah, free is good. That's right. Yes, uh, thank you for sharing that, the exelearning.org. Yeah, that's another one that you can get. And that's it. It starts with you. So don't be afraid, as I said at the beginning, feel free to uh, go in and take a look um, and do it now. We're gonna have um, the next session in two hours. Um, can someone add the link to the next session? So try things out for the next two hours. See if you have any questions and you'll be able to get live answers right away. And I'll try to give a uh, screen sharing demo to make it easier. Greek. Oh, I see, working on a lesson. All right. So yes, it's um, right now it's uh, 12 in a minute, which means that the next session is at two o'clock in two hours. So in two hours from now, exactly two hours from now. Thank you, Nevis, for that link. Yeah. Okay, there's the link. It's going to be on activities. I'm going to go over some of the things uh, to make it easier for you. Lots of activities. So we'll see you in two hours. Try to go into the teacher practice area. Try the activities and the resources so that... Oh, you want to learn about Sloodle. You have to try Sloodle. So it's 5 BST time. All right, so take a break and we'll see you later. Thank you, everyone. Uh, copy chat, yes, copy chat. Uh, there's a copy chat. Tom usually does it too, but it's good if you can do it. And we'll see you later.